Hi, my name is Alex, aka a Notioneer. I'm a full-time Notion consultant and creator, and you've probably just seen that Notion's released some big updates to its grouping functionality earlier today. This update means that you can now group your database views based on these types of properties, and also you can group them vertically as well as horizontally. This is a huge improvement because it gives you lots more ways to visualize and manage the data in your databases compared to before. And I've had early access to this feature for a while now, so I've created this video to share some of the most useful applications for this functionality that I've come across so far. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of the database views in this video, I've shared a link in the description to the page that I'm gonna go through during this video. And so you can dig through the database views and see how they're configured in more detail there. I've also shared a link so that you can download the task database, which I've used to create the scheduling view example uh, for free in that page. So let's get stuck in. First, we'll look at creating a Jira style Kanban board. This is one of Jira's main features, and this particular board view is taken from my Jira alternative Notion template. And you can see here, we're looking at tickets or tasks grouped by status horizontally. So you can see the various statuses along the top of the board view there. But now we can also group views vertically as well as horizontally. So in this case, we've grouped the tickets by epic or project, and you can group databases based on almost every different type of column. So this view is grouped by a relation, and these pages are pages from the related epics database. Development teams often work on several features at once, so it's helpful to be able to see progress towards completing each feature individually broken down like this. And you can also calculate total subgroups based on things like the number of pages in each group or number columns if you've added those to your database. So for example, developers will often use story points to estimate how long each ticket will take to complete. And the 12 next to the comment moderation epic shows that the open tickets for that feature represent 12 story points. That figures based on our story points remaining formula property so when a ticket is moved to the done column, then that number is going to decrease. And that's now come down to seven. If we take a look at the page itself, or one of these pages, uh, we can see the formula property, which is calculating the number of story points. So here we're just looking at the number of story points that were estimated for this particular ticket. We're checking whether or not the status has been set to done. And if it isn't, uh, then we'll show the number of story points. If it is marked as done, then we'll show zero. And obviously that updates the calculation. This gives us a sense of how much work is left to do in order to finish the feature. Next up, we'll take a look at creating swim lanes for Gantt or timeline views. So this is a view of my task database from my simple project management system template. And timeline views are a great way to see how long each task should take and what order they'll be completed in. But if you have all of the tasks which each team needs to work on in order to complete a project in a single view, you spend a lot of time searching for the tasks that your team in particular needs to work on. In the past, you'd have used filtered views to only show your team's tasks, but then you'd have to switch between different views to see what everyone else is working on, and that wasn't great for people like project managers who need to see everything in one place. Now you can group timelines by team. So teams can collapse other team sections to just focus on their team's tasks. So we can hide the product and engineering and marketing sections just like that if we're on the design team. So teams can collapse the other team's sections to focus on their tasks, but they have easy access to them if they need it. This time we're counting the number of incomplete tasks uh, that are assigned to each team to show this number here. So the design team is all set. Moving on, we can have a look at the first of our dedicated task views just here. So this is another view of the task database from my simple project management template. And this time we're looking at a breakdown of our tasks based on the due dates for those tasks. 
So the tasks that were due last week are shown in this column right here. This week's tasks are shown here and next week's tasks are shown here. You can't turn dates into relative weeks like last week and this week using Notion's inbuilt functionality. So I've had to use formulas for this instead. And basically uh, we're doing this calculation using two different formula properties just to make this a little bit simpler. First of all, we're calculating the relative week uh, for each task. So this is just transforming uh, the week into a particular number in the year and allowing for uh, tasks on different years. And then we're having a look at that relative week and we're translating it into last week, this week, next week, and so on. We're going to group by this week text in our board view. So that's how we've come to uh, have these three columns here. But in order to set this up, you're going to need a couple more steps. So first of all, uh, you're going to want to group a board view uh, based on the formula property. So I've selected the week text property right here. When you select that, you need to choose exact rather than alphabetical uh, if you want to see the whole label from your formula. The next step is to sort by uh, sort this list manually rather than alphabetically or reverse alphabetically because obviously last week uh, would come before this week but next week would come before this week if we were sorting alphabetically and what I've done is I've hidden the in four weeks uh, option that had come up just there. Um, you could obviously simplify this formula to only show you last week, this week and next week but it's quite helpful to be able to see further ahead at times so I've left those values in there as well but I've hidden uh, that option right there along with uh, the no week text option so that we can just focus on this week, last week and next week. So now we can take a look at creating a daily schedule view for our tasks. So here we've got a simple task database with a date property for the due date and separate multi-select properties for the hours. And again, grouping database views by date wasn't possible in Notion before, but now it is. And it's really easy to add tasks in this view by clicking the new button in whichever section we want to add our task inside. And we can drag and drop our tasks to either move them to another hour or even to another day, which again was something that we couldn't do before on both axes. Because we're using a multi-select property for the time, we can also assign this task to several different time slots. So if I open up this page now and select 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. as well, then we're going to see uh, our task three just there and also right here and there because that's a duplicate of the task page. Now, if we check the complete checkbox, then we're going to remove that task from this view. This vertical layout is great for time blocking as well. So give that a try too. Couple of technical details. Uh, if you want to, you could block out or you could collapse the 12 p.m. time slot right there if that's the time when you always have lunch, for example. And you can change the size of these cards. If you want to have a more or less compact view, just go into your property settings and set that to small, for example, so that you can see your entire week's worth of tasks without any horizontal scrolling. The downside of doing that is if you have longer page titles or you need to display a lot of information on the cards, then sometimes that will get cut off if you have smaller tasks. Next up, we can have a look at creating a tasks by team member breakdown. And this one's pretty simple to explain. Uh, I think it's gonna be used by lots of different teams. It's pretty similar to the first view that we looked at, but the advantage is that not only can we see uh, obviously the status of each of our tasks, but we can also see which member of the team is working on each of those tasks which is great for things like team meetings or just creating a shared team dashboard so that you can have everyone working from the same page but only focusing on their tasks uh, whenever they're doing their work. Lastly, I just wanted to show this bonus view uh, which allows you to organize your holiday with a group board view as well. Previously, I had had a board view like this set up for planning my holiday 
And I had things like uh, activities that I was going to do in the morning uh, and then activities that I had planned for the afternoon uh, all sort of jumbled together, obviously just listed vertically in each of these columns where we have a column for each day uh, so that we can sort of organize our activities by day. But when you had uh, an event in the morning and then no event in the morning the next day, it would look like this event was gonna say take place at the same time as that event and obviously it wasn't. So now what I've been able to do is create uh, these extra groups based on the morning or basically the time of day uh, drop down option that I've got right here. I can see really clearly this is what I'll be doing in the morning, the afternoon, what I'll be having for dinner very importantly. Uh, what I'll be doing in the evening on the nights when I have something planned there and then lastly where I will be staying each day. So that was everything that I wanted to cover in this video. I really hope that's been helpful. Please feel free to add a comment if you have any questions at all about anything that I've covered in this video. And don't forget you can see the database views that I ran through in this video via the link in the description if you want to take a closer look at how they were configured. I'll be sharing more updates like this very soon, so stay tuned.